in the Oswego County Historical Journal, and I just I devoured all of this stuff. So I mean I, I'm I am a real fan of Oswego history. I actually think I know a few things, but then I think I know a few things about a lot of stuff. <laughs> I sometimes surprise myself that I don't know as much as I did think I knew. Anyway, I, I'm so happy to see so many familiar faces here. Uh, should pay particular homage to my successor as mayor, Terry Hamill, and his wife, Martha, who were here. I'm thrilled to see them here. And George Scriba, my gosh, George and I go back 40 years. Probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I became mayor, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to put flowers all around City Hall, and we did. And so we planted a bunch of tulips. I think they still come up. And I said to my assistant Eli, I said, you know, we need to put tulips along the linear park. And I said, as a matter of fact, I think we need a tulip festival. I said we could call it the Scribe a Tulip Festival. So I said to Eli, I said, describe a tulip. He said it's a tall plant with you know a thing. Stem sticking. <laughs> You'd have to know Eli. We never did get to have the Scribe of Tulip Festival. Uh, we had a lot of ideas, uh, some of which we implemented, some of which um, we did not, although we tried. John, I'll just turn. The first meeting I had with you, you were walking across the Swiggle County. I was a little thinner right back then. <laughs> you walked all the way across the county. You're running for the assembly, state assembly. Thank you for reminding me. We were running for the at that time. And it was our first meeting you know, in and my driveway. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. I did. I, I was, uh, it was my last year of law school. I was, what, 23, 24 years old. And I walked from Oswego to Rome to demonstrate my concern for the high price of a loaf of bread, the high price of uh, state government, of course, nothing much has changed since. <laughs> and when I got to Rome, I said, here I am in Rome, and I want you to know that I came from Oswego. And just like Barry St. Ledger did, coming down the Oswego River to uh, Rome, to Ariscone, at the Battle of Ariscone, um, he got stopped at Ariscone, never quite made it to Saratoga, and we won the Revolutionary War, and as they say, the rest is history, but I will not be stopped in Rome on my way to Albany. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Anyway, it's so good to see you know so many uh, so many close friends of, and acquaintances of many many years ago. And uh, I see Mary Miller. I got to say hello to Mary Miller. My God, Sheriff Miller's uh, wife and. Uh, we go back a ways too. So anyway, I could say hello to everybody. I go on forever here, but yeah. actually, I, I've got another 15 minutes because the audiovisual part of the program doesn't <laughs> seem to be operative. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> my title today is Oswego, 1848 till now, restoring an aura of confidence and optimism. So let me take you back in time, back in time to a period. When this very building, not this one, but the original building here, was being built, Garrett Smith donated the money, I think it was 1848. And that is the year that the village of Oswego became the city of Oswego. And uh, the marketplace at Old City Hall was a, a thriving mecca of commerce. There were tall ships that abounded in the harbor. And Carol Frolito is not going to give up. <laughs> I just I'll I'll rattle on here while you're trying to figure it out. And and we have the newly constructed Oswego Canal, which connected the Oswego Canal with the Erie Canal, and uh, and thus New York City really with Canada. Um, and that canal was built after a concerted lobbying effort on the state level by then state senator Alvin Bronson, who had been the mayor of the city of Oswego, who was the first mayor of the city of Oswego. You know, I want one little other note. George, it's not Senator. It's not Senator. Nor am I. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Back to Oswego, anything can happen. <laughs> anyway, the very chair that the mayor of the city of Oswego sits in, I don't know how many of you, maybe other than Terry, would know this, is booty from the 1848 Mexican War. Oh. It was actually stolen 
from Montezuma's Palace and brought to Oswego by Colonel uh, Rosemary Nesbitt would have known the name. Probably Colonel Blaney, he did everything else. <laughs> but the, the chair in which I sat and which Terry sat was actually from, and is still from the halls of Montezuma. So how about that little, little known historical fact? So, yeah. Anyway, connecting Oswego to the newly dug Erie Canal was Alvin Bronson's dream. And Bronson worked very diligently to ensure that his dream came true. There's a little story, it's kind of an apocryphal story, that I told when uh, I, told, I used it in my inaugural address as mayor. Um, I found it in Johnson's 1877 History of Oswego County, which is a fascinating book. Um, anyway, Alvin Bronson's on his way to Albany on horseback. Uh, and it's like 1828 or thereabout. And, and as he gets near Rome, he bumps into, of all people, the former vice president of the United States, Aaron Burr. And he and Burr had a lively discussion. And Burr said, well, Alvin, how are you, how are you doing with that canal proposal? And Alvin said, well, great, said Mr. Vice President, all of the sensible people seem to be for it. And Burr looked at him and responded, he said, Alvin, if only the sensible people are for it, then you have a wide array of antagonists arrayed <laughs> against you. You have many obstacles to overcome. So overcoming adversity and achieving his goals was something that Alvin Bronson did, and he did well. And the canal today is a result of Mr. Bronson's efforts. So in 1848, Oswego was a boom town. There were a lot of flour and grist mills along the river. They were springing up the waterway just like dandelions. And uh, there was a new starch factory being built on the west side near the Barrett Canal. The city boasted a population of about 10,000 people. And uh, as they say, many a sailor took refuge in its sprawling, protected harbor and in the gin mills that proliferated around the harbor as well. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, so Oswego were, was, in 1848, according to Johnson's history, a place where an aura of confidence and optimism abided. There were great hopes for the future growth of the city. It was planned out to be a city of 100,000 inhabitants. So the wow. streets and its avenues were, were built accordingly. Well, we never did quite achieve that projected growth, but the city remained a very bustling hub well into the post-World War II uh, era, the baby boomer era. Um, I'm a baby boomer, so in the 1960s, we had Alcan Aluminum, and then the growth of the steam plant, and the major expansion of the college into a full-fledged university, and the building of three nuclear plants, and all of that continued the boom time for us, we go. Then things started slowing down a little bit in the 1970s and the 1980s, and there was generally an out-migration of manufacturing jobs from upstate in general, really. Even nearby Fulton, which had experienced a very strong industrial base, uh, started to lose its industrial base. So by the late 1980s, it was pretty clear that Oswego needed to chart a new course and shift gears to regain momentum. And so. I ran for mayor on a theme of uh, building on Oswego's waterfront ambiance and heritage. And, and I do think we made great strides in putting Oswego on the map uh, on a state and, and a national basis. You know, wherever I go today, I'll say I'm from Oswego. And I'm always, I used to be the mayor of Oswego. My nephew says, he does a great impersonation of me. Hi, I'm John Sullivan. I used to be the mayor of Oswego. <laughs> I guess I say that a lot. <laughs> But um, uh, my goal was to rebrand Oswego uh, from the port city of Central New York, which is an important part of our heritage and our current um, activity, but to rebrand it to the place where the water never ends. And so we actually created a commercial with a jingle uh, with that theme, which was sung by Nancy Kelly and we created a logo, uh, which is now what greets visitors at the, at the city uh, entrances. 
and we even got the oil storage company to paint a big billboard on the oil storage tanks with the bumper sticker logo Oswego with a water never ends. You've probably seen it with the waves and the sunset. And I'm very, very proud of that, that, uh, you know, that rebranding and that emphasis because in emphasizing tourism, we promoted the community as a one day destination, a place where largely people from Syracuse or Rochester maybe would come up for the day, enjoy the historic ambiance, take a walk downtown, maybe go to a local restaurant and, uh, and it says now show Nancy Kelly video. <laughs> Well, if you've got something I can plug it into, do you have something you're I, well, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Because this is... I'm going to put this <coughs> on audio. I'm going to play it on my iPhone and you'll see it in a mini version on my iPhone. I think I just try. Oh. Uh, um, I think I need Apple TV to connect to it. So. I don't know, I, you know, I, it was a little difficult to find it because I had to go into a box of old VHS tapes and found that yeah, one had been yeah. erased by my kids. It was labeled Nancy Kelly and it was some <laughs> cartoon. And, uh, but I did finally find it and was able to dub it on here. I called the city clerk's office and they don't have it. But I think we ought to have, I think we ought to resurrect it maybe. I mean, it's a, it's a good commercial, so. So anyway, that's that's what we emphasized. Um, and in fact, when I ran for mayor, I had another little video I was going to show you, but I won't. Uh, we, we had a theme, sail with, set sail with Sullivan. We even had a guy who did a song, set sail with Sullivan, and, uh, straight ahead, full steam. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we emphasized harborfront development and the city common council, some of the members were not entirely enthusiastic about my approach. They accused me of supporting all the yachties and, all these people who were, you know, that I was forgetting the little guys in rowboats. Well, listen, I'm really basically a little guy in a rowboat myself, so I never really forgot. I'm still from the forks of the road, so I always defended it. But I thought Oswego needed a new uh, emphasis, and so we, I think, provided that. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of the story. I want to take you back to the late, teen, uh, late 1970s for a minute. And at the behest of Mayor Jack Fitzgibbons, I chaired the City Charter Commission um, and we rewrote the charter of the city of Oswego. And we strengthened the powers of the mayor and extended the term to four years and professionalized the hiring of the uh, uh, personnel with the Civil Service Commission being abolished and the personnel office taking over. And it's actually one of the few uh, successful charter revision commissions in the last 50 years in New York State. Invariably, when a mayor appoints a charter commission, it gets all involved in politics, and everybody gets fighting, and somebody's you know against it, and it's very hard to get a full uh, revision of any city charter. But we did it. And I want to tell you a little story about how I think we pulled it off. First of all, we got a good bipartisan group of people on the on the commission, and uh, and they were 